properties of determinants time, really these questions are just uh, all the ones that require you to know uh, uh, how, how determinants work, especially in this kind of symbolic form where we're told the determinant of one kind of standardized matrix and then we apply a bunch of transformations onto it and we want to see what that uh, determinant will become. So our rules here, uh, and I'm actually not going to write them out because they're full sentences, but I'll, I'll talk them out, is uh, that if you exchange two rows or columns of a matrix, it will uh, invert the determinant. So your determinant will go from, say, uh, 6 to negative 6. Uh, and, and the reason why switching a row and switching a column is the same thing is because we know that the only uh, real legal operation uh, in elementary row terms is uh, flipping two rows. But since, here's uh, rule two, the determinant of A transpose is the same thing as the determinant of A. So taking the determinant of a matrix switching two of its rows and then taking the determinant again is the same thing as just switching two of its uh, columns to begin with. Then multiplying a row by a factor or a column by a factor will multiply the determinant by that factor. If you multiply uh, an entire matrix by a certain factor, that's the same thing as multiplying uh, each row or each column by that factor. So you will uh, end up you will end up multiplying the matrix by by uh, yeah by whatever factor you uh, multiplied your 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 matrix by uh, to the power of uh, whatever dimension that matrix is. So in our case, if we were to multiply if we were to multiply this uh, by I'll actually choose a different number. If we were to multiply our entire, and this is a better example down here, uh, our entire matrix by 5, our determinant used to be 6, but since we're multiplying this by 5, this by 5, all of these columns by 5, we would end up multiplying our, our original determinant of 6 by 5 to the third power. Uh, so that's a nice little rule. Additionally, adding any factor of a matrix to another matrix. So adding two row twos to row three or something uh, does nothing to that, uh, to that uh, determinant, that, that matrix. Yeah, the determinant, there we go. Okay, so with all of those rules, and I might have missed some that we'll come across along the way, uh, we should be able to figure everything out. So how we're gonna do these is we're gonna start with this matrix and just apply one by one the transformations that we see here, keeping track of how that would affect our original determinant of 6. So we see it looks like this row, uh, sorry, this column and this, uh, yeah, these two columns uh, have been multiplied by 2 here and 3 here, and then this row has been multiplied by 1 sixth. So overall, this will multiply our determinant by 3, and then by 2, and then by 1 sixth, uh, which in the end does nothing, but it's still good to uh, note. So we have dealt with all, or accounted for, all of those transformations that um, I've now crossed out. We notice that our matrix has been transposed, our C1, C2, C3 now reads down the first column instead of the third row. Uh, but before transposing, it looks like uh, A is now the middle column. So let's switch C and B. Now we have A, C, B. And now let's switch, uh, this is, sorry, A, A row, C row, B row. And now let's switch C and A. That gives us C, A, B. Now if we take our transpose, we will end up with C, A, B, like so, which is what we see up here. So overall, we had to switch two rows, so we'll multiply by negative 1 and uh, negative 1 again, and then our transpose did nothing. So they like to be a little 
uh, sneaky with these a lot of the time because in the end we'll see multiplying by 6, dividing by 6, multiplying by 1, our answer is just 6. Number 5, we're looking for the determinant of this matrix. We know that the determinant of an upper triangular matrix is just the product of its main diagonal elements. Uh, so that would be here if we are dealing with an upper triangular matrix, but we're not here uh, because remember this is our main diagonal. Our, our, we're we're kind of looking at a, a mirrored version of what we would like to see. But remember, uh, one of our properties is that we can switch any two columns around and just multiply our determinant by negative one. So let's take, I don't want text box options, there we go. So let's take uh, uh, column four and row, uh, sorry, column four and column one and switch them. And let's take column two and column three and switch them. And after that, we will have one zero 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 two zero zero two four three zero negative one three negative eight four, which is uh, the upper triangular form that we like to see. And our determinant hasn't changed at all. We've multiplied it by negative one twice. And so all we need to do is multiply our elements on the main diagonal. That gives us positive 24. We have a three by three real matrix with a determinant of five. We need to find the determinant of this thing. So it looks like every row has been multiplied or every column, doesn't matter, uh, has been multiplied by two. So we'll have to take our five and multiply it by two to the third power uh, as our first as our first adjustment here. That lets us get rid of all of these. Now we see it looks like our first column is good to go. All of those are in the correct positions. However, they have switched uh, columns two and three. So unswitching those will multiply our determinant by negative one. That gives us a determinant of negative 40. If the determinant of this guy is negative 16, what is the determinant of this? Well, we know that adding a factor of a row to another row does absolutely nothing, so we can cross all of these off uh, with, with nothing uh, done there. We see that row 1 has been multiplied by 2, so to get this matrix into that form, we will need to uh, multiply by 2. So we started, um, or sorry, let's, let's work backwards. The determinant of this used to be negative negative. 16 and if we uh, divide if we divide row 1 by 2 we will have uh, you know reverse engineered whatever they did there it looks like uh, this column and this row have been multiplied by negative 1 this term being multiplied uh, by negative 1 twice so it still shows up as positive so we can remove both of those at the same time and have our determinant uh, remain the same. Then what has uh, what else has gone on here? It looks like uh, we will need to switch the A and the C row and then switch the C and the B row to get it into the form A row, then B row, then C row, and then we will need to transpose our matrix uh, to get to get the A column, the B column, and the C column. So those two switches multiplied by negative one twice, and then our transpose did nothing. So, uh, and at this point we have this matrix here, and so we're left with a determinant of negative eight. And last, 10. Suppose we have a three by three matrix here with a determinant of four. We're trying to find the determinant of B. We know that adding a factor of a row to another row does nothing. We're crossing all of those off, making sure not to cross off uh, what used to be there. So D, E, and F do, do actually belong here. I've done that before where I've crossed off the wrong one. That didn't uh, go particularly well. Then uh, we'll need to uh, take away this row multiplied by 2, and in order to uh, take matrix A and turn it into that, of course we would need to multiply our determinant by 2. 
Now we have A, B, C, G, H, I, D, E, F. So we need to switch rows uh, two and two and three there. So that's a factor of negative one. And now we're left with A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. That is the negative eight that we're looking for. And that's it. So in the end, it's just the application of, I think, four uh, individual rules. And uh, they pretty much have exactly one of these questions every exam. So it's a good thing to uh, have, uh, you know, in the back of your mind. <laughs> That's a really bad way of putting it. Okay, see ya.